empty hearts and neon lights The playing with my mind Gotta get out of here tonight Oh, I'm gonna run off and I'm proud And I'll tell myself it's fine to be alone Just to find somewhere Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome, everybody. How's everybody doing today? I do have new emojis. Yay, yay. Um, unfortunately, I am here to bring you bad news. They did come across Dylan Rounds. They found his body today. Um, the mother said that they did a plea deal with the alleged neighbor guy that they arrested which led to his body and i'm going to show you the news clip here in just a minute i want to say hello to everybody though hello ryan bremer debbie johnson tina bobina believe sassy gg yes um denise curse with curiosity frankie nunya bizwax <laughs> Uh, Taxi Slut, God is Love, Sleuth Fairy, Mustang Mama, Misty Ray, Carly Strogans, Good Riddance 2023 from the Elmer, <laughs> God's Girl, hello, hey Coupon Mama, Sammy, Sleuth Fairy, Miggy, so sad, but now he can be laid to rest, and Dylan, you're life was cut short but now may 
you live eternity in your mansion in the sky with no pain and no worries, Angel. Aw. Hey, God's girl, Debbie Lemons. Oh, well, tell her I'm tell her to come back anytime, Coupon Mama. We enjoyed having her. Carly, Sammy, Daniel Berry Sports Highlights, Lucy Ferry, Ryan, Bella Nella, Jason Finch. Such a sad case. That young man was such a responsible kid. He would have done great things for him in his hard work. Yes. Sad. Hey, DJ. The news said remains presumed to be Dylan Brown's found in remote Utah desert after missing two years. Yes. Welcome, everybody. Hello, a bit crazy. Nora Woods, Debbie Nelson, Smelly Story, Raindrop, Nora Woods. Come on in, everybody. Tuesday Low, God is Love, Oceania, um, WR, Walk the Line. Welcome, welcome, everybody. I am going to show you this clip about um, where they found him and more information on him. Um, we do know that this guy was working on a farm and he had a creepy neighbor that stayed in the trailer who has been since arrested on his unaliving. Dylan was ahead of his time. Yes, he was. He was. So I'm going to um, let me put the link out here for the thing and we're going to play this okay so here we go let me play this while we when he vanished and his family here we go we'll start from the beginning. has been found dylan rounds his remains have been found in the remote area of lucin utah dylan is the young 19 year old who vanished over memorial day weekend back in 2022 he was a farmer. He moved to the desert town of Lucin, Utah, which is in northern Utah, kind of near the Nevada border, when he vanished. And his family tells me that this morning his remains were found near or in Lucin in a remote area. That's all the information that we have at the moment from his family. Of course, Rounds had been missing since May of 2022. The 19-year-old spoke with his mother on the phone right before he vanished and his family has spent the past two years searching for answers. His mother, Candace Cooley, tells me that as part of a plea agreement with James Brenner, the man accused of killing Dylan, uh, Brenner led the investigators out to the site where the remains were on Tuesday morning, which would be today, in, uh, April 9th, in case you're just tuning in. Um, and that's a good thing. Now the pa the family can put him to rest and they can have some closure and actually be with their son. Thank you so much, uh, Sleuth Fairy. Thank you. I was just wondering what happened to him. I know hopefully it'll come out soon with the confession, but I'm going to play the rest of it for you. I just have to stop it every once Or you're watching on another day. Uh, they got there, they found those remains, and they have been recovered. Now, Brenner is charged with aggravated murder and abuse or desecration of a human body in connection to Round's death. Let me show you just how remote this area is. That's where Dylan was farming. That was his camper. That was his truck. And you can see there's not much around this area. Uh, it, 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 it really was a desolate, desolate area. James Brenner, this is the man who is facing those charges. Um, he again, must have said something to investigators or cooperated or something. We don't have all of the details at this point, uh, but they they do have the remains because of uh, of where. I wonder why he unalived him. I, I don't I don't understand it. It's weird. James Brenner led them. This is a spot where James Brenner had his camper. He lived near Dylan Rounds out there. Both of them were in separate campers. And when his when Dylan's family went out to begin looking for him in late May of 2022, how how could they have not found him that close to where he lived? Hey, Nycock, this is wonderful news. Thank you, Daisy. Love you and appreciate you greatly. You're welcome. But look how close he was to this camper, y'all. How could they have found his boots right there behind that mound boot. of dirt, which was some distance off? 
And there was also a shed right by James Brenner, James Brenner's camper. This is what that shed looked like. And within a few days of Dylan disappearing, James Brenner cleaned that shed to the, to the point of how it looks now. You know, it doesn't look very clean, maybe to some of us, but he did remove bags out of that shed, according to Dylan's family. And he did take those to a, uh, an undisclosed location. And so all of this would, would likely have come into play if, if there was a trial, it still could as far as evidence. Uh, but as I mentioned, according to Dylan's family, as part of some sort of plea deal, Brenner took the authorities to the area where Dylan's body was, and they were able to find it. I spoke with Dylan's family. They, of course, are a lot of emotions tonight. This has been a, um, such a mystery since for two years now. But Candace did ask me to uh, convey, we thank everyone for, for their support and love. We are grateful we now have Dylan's body and can bring him home as we continue our fight for justice. And uh, unclear when Mr. Brenner will appear in court again. There was a hearing scheduled for this month, but at last check that was delayed. Uh, however, now with the recovery of Dylan's body, it, it, could, it could be had sooner rather than later. I want to show you on a map just where this place is because it's desolate. And when I say this place, I don't mean where Dylan's remains were actually found other than it was in the Lucin area, but that's a very large area. Uh, but this is where Lucin is. If you pull out here, you can see the Nevada, Utah uh, um, border right here on the left of your screen. And then over here is Montello, Nevada. Dylan went back and forth between Montello and Lucin quite a bit. This was another if you want to say big town, it's not real big, but the closest nearest town uh, to, to where Lucin is. So he went back and forth between these two places. And in the early stages of the investigation, uh, there was a lot of, of look, a lot of focus on Montello. And then it seemed to shift into Lucin. Uh, I don't even know if there's a population count for Lucin, but if we, they do have an airport, as you can see, if we zoom out quite a bit more, this will give you a reference as far as where this is located. So over here is Tremont in Utah, Brigham City, Malad is here, Lava Hot Springs, Blackfoot, Shelley. So it's right over here. And uh, it's it's quite quite a distance if you were to fly from Idaho Falls, or start, excuse me, if you were to drive from Idaho Falls down to Lucin. But this is where his body was found. And this is where family uh, are breathing a, a sigh of relief now that his his remains had been found. So there still are a lot of questions. There still are um, some court stuff to obviously get worked out, to get solved, to get taken care of. This has been a case we've covered extensively on East Idaho News since Dylan vanished. Um, in fact, here was a picture just at CrimeCon last year. They put up a Have You Seen Me poster with all of these uh, nice messages. It's been like a year and a half since he went missing, I think. Um, he was just 20. That monster, that monster. Messages around them, uh, keep fighting, love how his parents represent him. We will find you, Dylan. Uh, hold on to hope. And then there's these wonderful photos that his mother has shared with us, uh, and on publicly on social media. There's little Dylan as a young boy feeding pigs. There he is on a tractor. He loved, loved, loved farming was big into farming, big into the outdoors, fishing. There he is. Um, I don't know if he's taking care of a sheep there. It looks like he might be. And here he is on a tractor, which again, he loved to farm. And that's what took him out to that location so that he could begin farming. He was raised in Eastern Idaho. His father is still in Eastern Idaho, Justin Rounds. And um, tonight, Again, they have the answer they've been waiting for. They have recovered Dylan Round's body. We will continue to follow this story uh, and bring you the latest developments. We have reached out to the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office to see if they have any, uh, any um, comment. What usually happens in these types of cases is they, do, they cannot confirm right away 100% like we know the ID. They'll send the body away for identification, and then it takes a day or two to get 100% confirmation. So that might be the, the case in, in this particular case, uh, but we will just have to wait and see what they have to say. Uh, but we will keep you updated. And tonight, our thoughts, our prayers are go out to Dylan and his family. Such a, 
a big piece of the puzzle that's finally hopefully closed in and bringing them a little bit of a closure or at least some answers to the questions they have had for so long. I'm Nate Eaton reporting. God bless him. That man, well, eventually they'll come out to say what really happened to him. That's so sad. So, so sad. I cannot believe that this poor boy fell victim on his own property. His own property. That that monster. That's sad, y'all. Let me see if we can find something. Any more updates on his body being found. If all possible. I got that one. Um, I think that's the only one right now that's... Um, so sad. Hang on just a second. Oh. Oh, man. I hate that. James Brez, he was accused of killing uh, Dylan Rounds in Utah. Let's go over a little bit of that, y'all. Of uh, Just to update you all a little bit on this case. When it comes to Dylan's case. For those of you that's not familiar with D Dylan's case. Um, I'll update you a little bit about this case here we go yo utah where the man accused of killing dylan rounds appeared in this courthouse monday afternoon james brenner is charged with aggravated Welcome murder and desecration of a human body he limped into the courtroom wearing an orange jumpsuit handcuffs and cuffs around his ankles his attorney asked judge brandon maynard for co-counsel to be appointed in this case. Dylan's parents, Candace Cooley and Justin Rounds, were in the courthouse along with some other extended family members. Brenner was charged in March for Dylan's death, although there has been no discovery of his body. Dylan is still missing. He vanished a year ago over Memorial Day weekend in the remote town of Lucin, Utah. He was farming in the desert area when he vanished. And since then, which we now know that he passed away. So this is where his camper was, and this is where his boots was found. I want to clarify that. His body was found there on the line in Utah. And we'll play that again. The old man was jealous over the land or the job, if I remember right. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Shy. Yeah, they can bring him home to bury him. I just want to give you all a little bit of a recap, then we'll go back. Then his it. parents have been working tirelessly to bring their son home. I asked what they thought when Brenner walked in the courtroom this afternoon. He's despicable. Uh, his whole act of limping around, it's its a complete act. It's not real. Um, I don't know if it's so he thinks we think he's going to die and make him an some sort of deal or what, but he just but wants the people to feel sorry. He for just him. wants people to feel sorry for him, and it's it's all an act. What did you think, Justin, when he walked in? Same thing. He just looks for attention to have people feel sorry for him. That's all I think. He's it's an act. Now, Brenner is also facing federal charges in addition to the charges here in Box Elder County that are related to Dylan's death. That means any time Box Elder County wants to hold a hearing with James Brenner here in this courthouse, they have to get the feds approval, and that can take six weeks. So this has been a drawn-out process that is frustrating Dylan's parents. The next, So evidently, he's worked out a deal. Evidently, he worked out a deal to where he confessed... So I'm curious to see what he did, because if I'm not mistaken, that guy said gruesome. So I don't know for sure, but we'll listen to this and we'll go back and listen. Court appearance is scheduled for July 31st when a preliminary hearing will be decided on whether to hold that preliminary hearing or whether that hearing will not be held. Of course, we will continue to stay up on top of it as Dylan's parents continue to search for any sign of their missing son. Reporting in Brigham City, Utah, I'm Nate Eaton, East. Okay, so we're going to go back to the news broadcast where they found him. And we're going to listen to it one more time because I thought he said that they found him. We'll, we'll listen to it. Hey, Amy, how are you, sweetheart? 
Here we go. Well, the weekend back in 2022. He was a farmer. He moved to the desert town of Lucen, Utah, which is in northern Utah, kind of near the Nevada border, when he vanished. And his family tells me that this morning his remains were found near or in Lucen in a remote area. That's all the information that we have at the moment from his family. Of course, Rounds had been missing since May of 2022. The 19-year-old spoke with his mother on the phone right before he vanished, and his family has spent the past two years searching for answers. His mother, Candace Cooley, tells me that as part of a plea agreement with James Brenner, the man accused of killing Dylan, uh, Brenner led the investigators out to the site where the remains were on Tuesday morning, which would be today. In, in, uh, on April 9th, in case you're just tuning in um, or, or you're watching on another day. Uh, they got there, they found those remains, and they have been recovered. Now, Brenner is charged with aggravated murder and abuse or desecration of a human body in connection to Round's death. Let me show you just... Abuse and desecration of a human body. What does that mean? Um, has He's been charged with murder, but Surely he's been charged with murder, abuse, and desecration of the human body. Welcome, everybody. Hello, Amy Lynn. Hello, Tuesday Low. Hello, Laura P. Welcome, everybody. For those of you who are coming in, um, they found Dylan Rounds' body today. According to what this news station says, his body was um, located in the desert. Um, but the guy that's accused of killing him, uh, made a plea deal with them today and led him to the body. So here's the, the location of where the camper was. And then there's, was that Dylan's truck? Just how remote this area is. That's where Dylan was farming. That was his camper. That was that Dylan's was truck. Okay. Hey, see, there's not much around this area uh it, it 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 really was a desolate desolate area james brenner this is the man who is facing those charges um he again must have said something to investigators or cooperated or something we don't have all of the details at this point uh but they they do have the remains because of uh of where james brenner led them this is a spot where james brenner had his camper he lived near Dylan Rounds out there. Both of them were in separate campers. And when his when Dylan's family went out to begin looking for him in late May of 2022, they found his boots right there behind that mound of dirt, which was some distance off. And there was also a shed right by James Brenner, James Brenner's camper. This is what that shed looked like. And within a few days of Dylan disappearing, James Brenner cleaned that shed to the to the point of how it looks now, you know, it doesn't look very clean, maybe to some of us, but he did remove bags out of that shed, according to Dylan's family. And he did take those to a, uh, an undisclosed location. And so all of this would, would likely have come into play if, if there was a trial, it still could as far as evidence. Uh, but as I mentioned, according to Dylan's family, as part of some sort of plea deal, Brenner took the authorities to the area where Dylan's body was, and they were able to find it. I spoke with Dylan's family. They, of course, are a lot of emotions tonight. This has been a, um, such a mystery since for two years now. But Candace did ask me to uh, convey, we thank everyone for their support and love. We are grateful we now have Dylan's body and can bring him home as we continue our fight for justice. And uh, unclear when Mr. Brenner will appear in court again. There was a hearing scheduled for this month, but at last check that was delayed. Uh, however, now with the recovery of Dylan's body, it, it, could, it could be had sooner rather than later. I want to show you on a map just where this place is because it's desolate. And when I say this place, I don't mean where Dylan's remains were actually found other than it was in the Lucin area, but that's a very large area. Uh, but this is where Lucin is. If you pull out here, you can see the Nevada-Utah uh, um, border right here on the left of your screen. And then over here is Montello, 
Nevada. Dylan went back and forth between Montello and Lucen quite a bit. This was another, if you want to say big town, it's not real big, but the closest nearest town uh, to, to where Lucen is. So he went back and forth between these two places. And in the early stages of the investigation, uh, there was a lot of, of look, a lot of focus on Montello, and then it seemed to shift into Lucin. Uh, I don't even know if there's a population count for Lucin, but if we, they do have an airport, as you can see. If we zoom out quite a bit more, this will give you a reference as far as where this is located. So over here is Tremont in Utah, Brigham City, Malad is here, Lava Hot Springs, Blackfoot, Shelley. So it's right over here. And uh, it's it's quite quite a distance if you were to fly from Idaho Falls, or start, excuse me, if you were to drive from Idaho Falls down to Lucin. But this is where his body was found, and this is where family uh, are breathing a, a sigh of relief now that his his remains have been found. So there still are a lot of questions. There still are um, some court stuff to obviously get worked out, to get solved, to get taken care of. This has been a case we've covered extensively on East Idaho News. I'll tell you what, I wonder if they were going to try to give him the death penalty or what their charges is going to be now. They've already charged him for murder, right? He's being charged for murder of Dylan. Now they're going to add abuse of, what did he say, abuse of the corpse? Since Dylan vanished. And um, body fact, here was a picture just at CrimeCon last year. They put up a have you seen me poster with all of these uh, nice messages around them. Uh, keep fighting. Love how his parents represent him. We will find you, Dylan. Uh, hold on to hope. And then there's these wonderful photos that his mother has shared with us. Uh, and on he publicly on fresh, social media, there's little Dylan is a young boy feeding Look pigs. How fresh there he is on a tractor. He loved, loved, the loved country boy. farming. Was big into farming, big into the outdoors, fishing. There he is. Um, I don't know if he's taking care of a sheep there. It looks like he might be. And here he is on a tractor, which, again, he loved to farm. And that's what took him out to that wow. location so that he could begin farming. He was raised in eastern Idaho. His father is still in eastern Idaho, Justin Rounds. And um, tonight, again, they have the answer they've been waiting for. They have recovered Dylan Rounds' body. You know, somebody in here said, do you think that this was a, an SA abuse? Like, do you think that he could have been a victim of SA from this guy? Hey, JJ, how are you? It does me too. I was talking to somebody earlier and there is more and more of these cases where boys are being essayed. I'm not saying he was, but could he have been? I bet he have made the land beautiful and profitable. Yes. I mean, I just don't get how come this guy un unalived him unless he wanted his land. He reminds me of a 15-year-old sweet little handsome face. I know. So what's the abuse of a corpse and desecrated of a body? We know what abuse of the corpse is, kind of like what happened to harmony montgomery but does that mean that he was dismembered maybe i don't know sick people in this world i gotta go back in a few okay jj it's okay yeah i don't know it just makes you feel like i don't know that maybe hang on somebody just sent me a message let's see who it was um Maybe it was her. Uh, okay. She brought that up. Let's bring it. Oh, thank you, Yanni. Thank you. Thank you for that super chat sticker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for supporting my channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yanni. God bless you. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm going to bring up what that means. Thank you for that super sticker, Yanni. God bless you. Hang on. So we'll bring this up. What does it mean to desecrate a body for the purpose of this section? Desecration of human. Let me put a trigger warning up. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Let me take this down right quick so we can read this. Oh, thank you, Yanni. God bless you. It, it I, I'll show it right here in just a minute, Lori. Um, it was near the a uh, spring. Thank you so much for that super those super chats, Yanni. Woohoo! Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll go back over this again. Thank you, Yanni, so much for that. Woohoo! Thank you, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna go over what that means. Desecration of a I'm I was gonna put a trigger warning up. Well, I can't read it. Trigger warning, y'all. Desecration of a human corpse means any act committed after the unaliving of a human being, including but not limited to dismemberment, disfiguration, mutilation, burning, or any act committed to cause the unaliving body to be devoured, scattered, or dissipated, except those procedures performed. So there you go. Desecration of the body is intentional, willfully, and knowingly removing and dis of human remains or treatment of them in an irrelevant or contemptuous matter. That's so sad. To violate the corpse and not to provide brutal. So, uh, provide burial. Burial. So that means this guy done something like that to poor little Dylan. So, let's go back to where they said his body was found because Somebody come in here and ask. We'll go back to that place where he said that Dylan's body was found. I think it was right through here. Because it's desolate. And when I say this place, I don't mean where Dylan's remains were actually found. Other Thank than it you, was in the area. But that's a very God large bless area. bless you. Uh, but this is where Lucin is. If you pull out Hang here, on, you can see the Nevada, Utah. Thank you, Yanni. Thank you so much, Yanni. God bless you for gifting that membership. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <coughs> thank you, Yanni. Thank you for supporting my channel. God bless you, Yanni. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Yanni. Uh, um, border right here on the left of your screen. And then over here is Montello, Nevada. Dylan went back and forth between Montello and Lucen quite a bit. This was another... Uh, if you want to say big town, it's not real big, but the closest nearest town uh, to to where Lucin is. So he went back and forth between these two places. And in the early stages of the investigation, uh, there. Hang on just a second. Thank you Johnny, for gifting another membership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. I can't see who gets them, but thank you so much for that. God bless you. Oh, Sugar Shack. I'm sorry, honey. I'm sorry. Thank you, Yanni. Let me see if I can go and find uh, where Yon who Yanni gave those memberships to, y'all. Hang on just a second. Um, hang on just a second. We'll see who got the membership. Um, let me see. Oh, Shauna, thank you so much. Thank you for being a member for eight months. Thank you so much. God bless you. I can't see who Yanni gave the memberships to, but thank you so much, Yana, Yanni, and thank you, Shauna. Thank you so much. Love you and the channel. Thank you guys so much. I love you too, Shauna. Thank you so much for supporting my channel, you guys. God bless you. Uh, let's let's finish this up, y'all. There was a lot of of look, a lot of focus on Montello. And then it seemed to shift into Lucin. Uh, I don't even know if there's a population count for Lucin, but if we, they do have an airport, as you can see. If we zoom out quite a bit more, this will give you a reference as far as where this is located. So over here is Tremont in Utah, Brigham City, Malad is here, Lava Hot Springs, Blackfoot, Shelley. So it's right over here. And uh, it's it's quite quite a distance if you were to fly from Idaho Falls, or start, excuse me, if you were to drive from Idaho Falls down to Lucin. But this is where his body was found, and this is where family uh, are breathing a, a sigh of relief now that his his remains have been found. So there still are a lot of questions. There still are um, some court stuff to obviously get worked out, to get solved, to get taken care of. 
This has been a case we've covered extensively on East Idaho News since Dylan vanished. Um, in fact, here was a picture just at CrimeCon last year. They put up a Have You Seen Me poster. He was found today for uh, everybody. Marcella, he was found today. Um, the family said that they made a, um, a he made a plea deal. The, the guy that was arrested, he made a plea deal with the police and he led them to the body of Dylan today. And they got him for also for abuse of a corpse and decimation of a body. And so I think that's, de is it desecration? Desecrate of a body, which means that he probably did something to, you know, get rid of the baby's body, which he's a monster, this guy is. So it's sad, y'all. It's so sad. But at least, at least his family can have some kind of closure now and just saw, wow. Yeah, I know. It's so sad, y'all. But at least his mom and dad can have some closure because not knowing where your child is is a nightmare, is an absolute nightmare. We know his mom spoke out. She was adamant for months of finding her son. I remember his mom saying they would do anything to know where he was. And I think that's why they worked out a plea deal is because they wanted to just be able to be around their son, you know? And so everybody's liking the new emojis. <laughs> if y'all haven't checked out the new emojis, look at them. I added a bunch of new emojis today. Some of them's funny, but yeah, this is very sad y'all. And it's, it's sad news. It's been two years. How much is left? You know, they've been finding a lot of bodies here lately, especially in the Kingsport area. What is going on in Kingsport, Tennessee, you guys? What is going on? That's what I would like to know. And yeah, for any of you all that is coming in, he was found today. That guy did do a plea deal. Everybody's loving those emojis. <laughs> Oh my goodness, they're cute. And yeah, the family does have closure. So I'm happy for that. It says he was found around a sp Springs. Kingsport, Tennessee has a serial killer. I don't know. It sounds like it's got something. But it's awful scary. You know, you've got... Jinkies thinks that there's a, a ring going on up there. Um, Let's see. Right, Daisy, Tennessee must have a serial killer. Well, we know in Greene County, Tennessee, how many bodies have they found in the last little bit in Greene County, Tennessee? There's a lot of them. Y'all are loving them emojis. I got some more to to, uh, to put up too. Yeah, may rest in peace. For anybody that's coming in, I'm going to replay this just so everybody that's coming in can hear for themselves about what happened to Dylan, okay? Candace Cooley tells me that as part of a plea agreement with James Brenner, the man accused of killing Dylan, uh, Brenner led the investigators out to the site where the remains were on Tuesday morning, which would be today, in, in, uh, on April 9th, in case you're just tuning in, um, or, or you're watching on another day. Uh, they got there, they found those remains, and they have been recovered. Now, Brenner is charged with aggravated murder and abuse or desecration of a human body in connection to Round's death. Let me show you just how... Okay, this okay, okay. So, he said aggravated unaliving, which is red rum, aggravated unaliving, abuse of a corpse, and desecration to a body, right? You may... You need to put the sleuth cow to Miss Daisy. <laughs> I know that's funny, ain't it? But um, yeah, so let's play that back over what he said about what they charged him with. Hang on. Is charged with aggravated murder and abuse or desecration of a human body in connection to Round's death. Let me abuse show you just how remote this area is. Body. That's where Dylan was farming. That was his camper 
that was his truck. And you can see there, there's not much around this area. Uh, it, 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 it really was a desolate, desolate area. James Brenner, this is the man who was facing those charges. He's creepy. Um, now, somebody he, said he was. Again, must have said something to investigators. Somebody or said or he something. was. We don't have all of And I don't know if it's true, but somebody in chat said he was bisexual. Is that true? Does anybody know if this guy was a bisexual? Hey, Shell. It is sad. It's very sad. This guy is creepy, but he's got a plea deal. So I wonder if. I wonder if this guy is going to get less sentence. I would literally hung the stuffing out of his family. I I would literally hug the stuffing out of his family if I could. The countless hours they spent looking and trying to locate him. Yeah, it kind of reminds you of this, these cases here in Tennessee a little bit, don't it? With Seth. All of the details at this point. Uh, but they they do have the remains because of uh, of where James Brenner led them. This is a spot where James Brenner had his camper. He lived near Dylan Rounds out there. Both of them were in separate campers. And when his when Dylan's family went out to begin looking for him in late May of 2022, they found his boot. Okay, so somebody in here said, "Hey, Can Can, where's Can Can?" Somebody in here, Shell said. At the beginning, they said he was bi. So I wonder if that was a motive for unaliving him. I wonder, I'm not wanting to put like SA on him or nothing. That will come out. But I just wonder if that had something to do with him unaliving Dylan. I can't find a number as far as bodies found in Tennessee. But did you know that 19 people died from the cold? in january 2000 in tennessee it's probably homeless people um uh, if i had to guess no it was over the land okay so it was over the land and a lot of them over the land that mound of dirt which was some distance off and there was also a shed right by james brenner james brenner's camper this is what that shed looked like. And within a few days of Dylan disappearing, James Brenner cleaned that. Now, did not, didn't they find Dylan's truck in this garage? If I'm not mistaken, did they not find his truck in this, in this guy's garage? I think they did. And that might be why they, he cleaned out this garage. Yes, Daisy in Tennessee, just in January. Oh, that's sad. Where was Dylan's truck? Didn't they find it on near this camper? They found his truck. Maybe it was just his boot. Yes, Shelly. I thought so. Because it's been a while since I've covered this case. But they found his truck. I thought they found his truck there near his camper. And that's why the dad got. Or maybe it was his tractor. Was his tractor or his truck? Do y'all remember? shed okay. to the to the point of how it looks now you know it doesn't look very clean maybe to some of us, but okay he did remove you, bags out of that shed according to dylan's family and wow. he did take those to a uh an undisclosed location and so all of this would, would likely have come into play if if there was a trial it still could as far as evidence uh, but as i mentioned according to dylan's family as part of some sort of plea deal Brenner took the authorities to the area where Dylan's body was, and they were able to find it. I spoke with Dylan's family. They, of course, are a lot of emotions tonight. This has been a, um, such a mystery since. Misty Ray said, yes, his truck was there because they couldn't find the keys. Then it showed up out of the blue, out of nowhere in the truck. Oh. See, that right there is a red flag. That is a red flag right there. Thank you, Misty Ray. For two years now. But Candace did ask me to uh, convey, we thank everyone for their support we and do. love. We Most are grateful we now have Dylan's body and can bring him home as we continue our fight for justice. 
and uh, unclear when Mr. Brenner will appear in court again. There was a hearing scheduled for this month, but at last check that was delayed. Uh, however, now with the recovery of Dylan's body, it, it could it could be. Okay, I'm going to try to do a little bit later. of a recap. I want to show I'm going to try to go back and find out a little more information so we can do. You forgot about the missing keys. Uh, a little bit more of a recap on Dylan's case because it has been a minute since we've covered his case. Um, hang on just a second. Uh, let's see here. It's so sad that they found him like that. Um, let's see if we can go back to body found in bonfire pit in the desert area, which we know that wasn't him. Man that killed, accused of killing him. Let's see. Police identified. Hearing of suspect accusing killing Dylan Rounds and family searches. Um, parents reveal shocking details about the rest of his son. Okay, so let's and y'all. Let me grab a link and then I'll pull it up here. I think this is law and crime. And uh let's go ahead and pull it up here. We're just gonna try to do a little bit of a recap on this because of here we go. This has been such an extreme fight to get to this point. Nearly one year after 19-year-old Dylan Rounds went missing from his Utah farm, charges are filed in his murder. His parents now speaking out, saying the charges are long overdue. It's about time. We've said it, it is about time. But to know how long they've had what they have infuriates us even more. Last week, 59-year-old James Brenner was charged with one count of aggravated murder and one count of abuse or desecration of a human body. The charges come months after Brenner was named a person wow. of interest in Rounds' case. He crossed paths, paths with a really bad, horrible guy that just is, I don't know what I can say other than it's unfortunate. According to a probable cause affidavit, investigators recovered a video from Rounds' phone that led to Brenner's arrest. Court documents read in part, quote, the video showed the defendant with blood stains on his arms and shirt as he was cleaning a gun. The shirt, which defendant is wearing in the video, was analyzed and the victim's DNA was found on the shirt. Wow. So he found the, they found his blood on the shirt. He, he ain't getting out of that. He is not getting out of that. Rounds' father, Justin Rounds, says news of the video was bittersweet. It's not good to at least finally have charges pressed on him and to find out didn't feel good to find out about the video, but it, but it did. Uh, the video of him cleaning the blood off, and, off of the gun in his hands. It, I don't know. I, felt, I can't really describe it. Well, it wasn't happy. The 19-year-old was last heard from in May of last year. So it was on May 28th, which was Saturday, that he called his grandma and said he had to get his um, truck in the shed. Rounds' mother, Candace Cooley, says her son called his grandmother to talk about some farming plans for the day. After that, he never made another call. And the reason it had to go in the shed is because he still had some triticale seed in it and his tarps had some holes. So if he didn't put it in the shed, then the rain gets into the seed, the seed sprouts, and it's no good. You lose your So that's why it had to get in the shed. Um, from there, he said he'd call her back. Um, he reached out, he called Brenner about, I can't remember the exact time, but this guy had it planned. This guy had it planned. So they already had charged him before they found his body. Huh? We know he was at the gate to get onto the property. Um, and then that was it. We had never heard from again. At the time of his disappearance, Rounds was working on his farm in Lucen, Utah, near the borders of Idaho and Nevada. His parents tell us he often traveled for work. Dylan chased his work. He had his stationary home to be in his father. I do want to say this right here. His parents tell us. He was found near Twin Falls, right in this area. According to what that guy said, they found him near 
uh, Twin Falls here. I just wanted to point that out because that guy a while ago just said that. Plus, he often traveled for work. Dylan chased his hey, work. Yeah. He had his stationary homes with me and his father, but he chased his work, uh, you know, just like so many custom people do. I mean, there's, there's custom crews all over this area for farming. There's people who come clear from Kansas to cut grain in Idaho. It is such a common thing that people don't realize. Um, it happens all the time. Though he owned property in Lucen, Rounds did not live there. Dylan absolutely did not leave in Lucen. He had a camp trailer there that he would stay in if he was planting or he had his pivot on and he needed to watch the water so he had a place to sleep. He didn't live there. He would be back and forth. He'd, he'd stay more in eastern Idaho. Both Rounds' parents tell Law and Crime Network he was a dedicated farmer who dreamed of working since he was a child. Dylan just, he, from the time he could toddle around with his dad and his grandpa, um, that was just it. We knew, you know, he was going to be a farmer and that's what he was going to do. I mean, he did, his, his hobbies were farming. It sounds kind of odd. It's kind of odd. He's like bit. me. His whole life, he's, he loves animals and he wants to farm. What a shame. He had a whole life ahead of him. That's what he liked. He, since he was little, that's all he ever wanted. So when he turned 16 and got to go do that stuff, like it was better than getting his driver's license just to be able to go work on a farm. But he was just a worker. He was just a good hearted worker. That's all he, you know, ever wanted. Neither parent felt unsafe with rounds working in Lucent, saying he was more than competent to run a farm on his own. I'm telling y'all right now, there's monsters everywhere. We're not safe. We need to stay armed up and keep our eyes out. Because people that we think we can trust, well, we're finding out more and more we can't trust them. Ten years old. Ten months. So all that that Dylan did, he wasn't he wasn't just some little nineteen year old kid. Dylan was pretty go getter and did hard work didn't bother. And people might think we just say that because it's our son. It's, it was the absolute truth. Strong-headed, strong-willed. He had his goals. He had his plans. Um, you know, ever since he was a kid, it was all about tractors and farming. Cooley says she last saw her son on May 23rd, the Monday before he was last seen. Oh, hang on, y'all. These commercials. Hang on. They'll get me if I don't... If I don't... Uh... Low in the house... I'm finishing Independence Valley. I'm going to go get my stuff and head to Lucent and plant. Just nothing, you know, just typical Dylan. Hey, Gail. Don't know he's coming, pulls in the driveway fast, jumps out of his pickup. Guess what, Mom? You'll never guess what. That was always, always, always had a story. Everything had to have, I mean, he wasn't going to call you just to see how you were doing. It always had to have a story. Guess what? That's how the conversation, you'll never guess what happened. You'll never guess what I see. That was just him. But days later, she received a concerning call. It was Monday that um, Dylan's best friend called me and said, have you heard from Dylan? And I said, well, no, I talked to him on Thursday. And he says, well, kind of told me Karen said I talked to him this day. And so I called him and I'd called and texted him a couple of times and didn't hear anything back over that weekend, which was nothing out of the usual. I knew he was planting. It was nothing for Dylan to break a phone, not have a charger, you know, nothing out of the ordinary until myself, his father, grandma, grandpa, friends, everybody kind of started talking and nobody had heard from him. And that was not normal. That's terrifying. Um, so that's when we headed, we all headed to Lucy. That's absolutely terrifying. One of a person's, one of a person's like worst nightmare right there. And we know that these people had been out looking for him for the last two years. I mean, they have been on platforms everywhere looking for this young boy i'm glad they got closure to go see what was going on after the call both cooley and rounds went to their son's property in lucid i called in a missing persons report uh in park valley which is about 50 miles from dylan's farm because i just knew i just knew something was wrong at first round says he thought there may have been an accident i started to think maybe there was a farming accident or something Maybe a tractor was stuck or maybe even broke down because it's such a big area. His phone was dead. Maybe he was somewhere there. But when they recovered Dylan's boots, 
Both parents say they knew something was wrong. Because he wouldn't lift his boots there. They weren't old. They weren't bad. They're being old and worn out for Dylan would be basically his toes sticking through a hole. I mean, it would, there would have been no reason for those boots to have been in my mind at all. But it's when we found the boots. When we found the boots, there is no other explanation for them to be out there besides Brenner put him out there. And the only way you would get Dylan's boots off of him is if he was not alive to keep you from doing it. And Wow. I want to read what Miss, she said, Dee Dee said, Miss Daisy, love you. Still can't stay in chat too long. I'm still weak from those two days in the hospital and can't hardly hold my eyes open. Oh, Dee Dee, you get better, honey. We're praying for you. Dee Dee, I'm so sorry, honey. I hope you get feeling better. We love you, Miss Dee Dee. You rest and get your get your rest that you need, okay? You rest, sweetheart. Love you, Dee Dee. Wow, she knew that this guy had done something to her son. That's when we knew. Cooley says officials with the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office were on scene when the boots were recovered. Looking back, she says the early stages of the investigation were, quote, terrible. I truly believe laziness, just shrugging it off. This 19-year-old kid got sick of farming and walking away. He just walked away. They wouldn't listen to us. Um, truly, I, I don't know what could go through their head to make them do what they do. I think we've all seen that with a lot of these cases. I think we're seeing a lot of that, in my opinion, in the Nashville area right now, not only with Sebastian's case, but more than, you know, with uh, Riley's, Riley uh, Strain's case, you know, who hurt Dylan? It was the, it was the guy that they charged, the neighbor guy. He was allegedly jealous and wanted the land. And it's really frustrating. I couldn't figure out why they didn't take it more serious than they were. I, I just couldn't understand it. Cooley tells Lawn Crime Network the Box Elder uh, County Sheriff's Office didn't take her son's case seriously. They just acted like it was normal. The Sheriff's Department, like, in, in those first days, and, and we will stand by it, they literally, they mocked us. They laughed at us. Uh, they lied to us. They told us, you know, they tell us, well, it takes us two and a half hours to drive out here. What in the so heck is wrong? That right there, mm -mm. see y'all, mm -mm. cops ain't supposed to be doing stuff like that. This is alleged, but that's sad. That is sad. You're telling us our son's not worth two and a half hours? You signed up to protect and serve this county, and this is part of this county. I don't care if it's a five hour drive. This is what you signed up for. Rounds has several theories for why the case was handled the way it was, but still can't fully understand. It was a holiday weekend, and I think that they kind of thought, well, maybe he's out partying with friends or doing something. They didn't know who he was, or really what he was about. He wasn't about that. Um, so maybe for a few days, that's what they were thinking. Why it took so long for charges and stuff, I don't, I don't know. Early on, both of Rounds' parents suspected James Brenner may have been involved in their son's disappearance. So then when we got up there, you know, Brenner was telling uh, myself and my husband about how, you know, Dylan couldn't fight his way out of anything. He shouldn't have even had a gun. He didn't know how to use it. All he could do was throw it at somebody. At the time he went missing, Renner was squatting in a trailer kept on the property where Rounds kept his grain truck. Cooley oh, he theorizes that that made Brenner mad and led him to quote snap. I, Dylan made him mad. He was squatting in that trailer, and that's what made him do it. They said, "Wow, not many people know." Still, there's only one other place going live. Yeah, I don't understand why other people's not going live about this. It's sad. Because he didn't answer his phone, so Dylan still took the gate down, even though it wasn't his property. And he had this wild horse that he tamed that he always wanted to keep in, and Dylan probably left the gate down, and that just made him mad, pissed him off that morning, and that's what he did. Oh, thank you, Hillbilly29. 
Thank you for being a member for 12 months. Yeehaw. Thank you so much. God bless you for that uh, membership. I'm sorry, but the LE in Tennessee has dropped the ball in too many cases. I agree, Amy. Thank you so much, Hillbilly29. God bless you. Yeah, I, I believe this boy probably PO'd him off. Justin Rounds agrees, Sad. saying a motive may stem from a buildup over time. He had nothing to gain from it at whatsoever. I think, like Candace says, a snap moment. I think he had a temper, and I think that maybe there was some jealousy, and, you know, maybe Dylan, I mean, he probably has said, probably, I'm just guessing, I don't know, but I mean, he probably had had a little bit of contention with Dylan, and Dylan was not the type to just put his head down and back down. He probably said something to him, but maybe even weeks before, and it just kind of got under Jim's skin and when the snap moment happened. I don't, I don't know. Rounds tells Long Crime Network he was introduced to Brenner years prior. A couple of years ago, I introduced him. This is Litter Robot, the highest oh, rated God. self cleaning litter box that removes the chores. Commercial. Sorry about that, y'all. He was at my grandpa's house. My son had bought a bunch of pigs. And across the road from my grandpa's house was a vet clinic. And Jim Brenner was there. I was pretty upset that they bought the pigs and brought them to that property. And I was pretty upset when I left. And Dylan texted me and says, Jim Brenner's going to shoot you. And he's going to do, he's, he doesn't like to be talked to like that. And I said, well, then I'll have to come talk to him. And I came back to talk to him at the farm and he was with my dad. And my dad was calming him down. And calmed me down and it kind of just blew over. He says Brenner had negatively spoken about his son in the past. Jim was talking to a kid that works for me. I was watching him on the cameras. He was telling the kid what a spoiled kid Dylan was. I doesn't treat anything very good. You could just see a lot of jealousy in him. And I called Dylan and I said, you know, Jim Brenner isn't your friend. He's sitting there talking about him. He said, ah, oh, Jim's just kind of an ass. You could tell when we got to the shed that Jim was... There was jealousy of Dylan when he was talking about how Dylan was bragging about how much money he had. Or... Cooley says Brenner was named a... Wow, he killed this young boy because he was jealous of him? I think there was more to that. I do. I really do. I think there's more to this case. I'm curious to see what they find with Dylan, which it's been two years, so I don't know if they're going to find much now after two years you know sad suspect in the case in july but was not charged in her son's murder until 10 months after he went missing that's when she learned about the video showing brenner cleaning off a gun the cold bloodedness part of it the i'm gonna go in and clean myself up i've took it i've taken his cell phone already um just the thoughts of well now i'm gonna take his boots like almost almost stripping my son of his pride and then standing face to face with us for days on end and never blinking an eye, never having a nervous tick, never acting uncomfortable, nothing. After Rounds' disappearance, multiple searches of his loosened property were made. It was so gut-wrenching and we were, we were so lost and we didn't know what to do and we didn't know where to search. Both Cooley and Rounds believe they may soon find their son's body, likely after the snow thaws. You know, like I said, last um, I'm going to play the video where they say that they found they found his body. Um, it was what it was at a falls. It was it was near a falls. Didn't they say I'll show it to you here in just a second, y'all. Uh, hey, Tams. Hey, everybody coming in. Um, it was at a, a how, it, last I'll go see we were out there. We were disorganized. We didn't know what we were doing. We were just desperately looking for our son. Um, this year, when we head out there, we've got some really specialized teams that are going to come out and help. Um, we've got some, some elite um, ex-military guys that are going to come out. It's going to be organized. Yeah, I know it, will find his body. it might take a little bit. But... He made a plea deal and told him where Dylan was today. She got to put positive vibes out there. Rounds visited his son's property this week. He says it's a way to connect with his son. At the same time, he's still coming to terms with the loss.
went out and looked at his farm and just it's a horrible place to get away to and i just wanted to get away and just kind of it's real peaceful out there there was nobody out there no noise no nothing it's i don't know kind of connect with him i don't even know i fully grasped what's happened sometimes yesterday it'd be pretty hard coming back from lucene Law and Crime Network reached out to the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office for a comment for this story, but have not yet heard back. James Brenner is due back in court on April. Okay, so I'm going to pull up um, the live stream from uh, today and, and give you all an idea of what happened because there's a lot of people coming in wanting to know what where he was found and stuff. So I'm going to pull that video back up and show you guys um where he was found and stuff okay hang on y'all well it's so sad but at least his family has got some some closure at least the family's got closure now so once again i'm gonna play this video just because there is people coming in that wants to know you know where he was found and what happened. So here we go. Peace out of Hoonews.com. We have some breaking news to bring you right now. The body of Dylan Rounds has been found. Dylan Rounds, his remains have been found in the remote area of Lucen, Utah. Dylan is the young 19 year old Lucen, who vanished over a weekend back in 2022. He was a farmer. He moved to the desert town of Lucen, Utah, which is in northern Utah, kind of near the Nevada border, when he vanished. And his family tells me that this morning his remains were found near or in Lucen in a remote area. That's all the information that we have at the moment from his family. Of course, rounds had been missing since May of 2022. The 19-year-old spoke with his mother on the phone right before he vanished and his family has spent the past two years searching for answers. It his shows mother it Candace Cooley tells me that as part of a plea agreement we'll with James Brenner, the man accused of killing Dylan, uh, Brenner led the investigators out to the site where the remains were on Tuesday morning, which would be today, in, uh, on April 9th, in case you're just tuning in um, or, or you're watching on another day. Uh, they got there, they found those remains, and they have been recovered. Now, Brenner is charged with aggravated murder and abuse or desecration of a human body in connection to Round's death. Let me show you just how remote this area is. That's where Dylan was farming. That was his camper. That was his truck. And you can see there's not much around this area. Uh, it, 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 it really was a desolate, desolate area. James Brenner, this is the man who is facing those charges. Um, he, again, must have said something to investigators or cooperated or something. We don't have all of the details at this point, uh, but they, they do have the remains because of, uh, of where James Brenner led them. This is a spot where James Brenner had his camper. He lived near Dylan Rounds out there. Both of them were in separate campers. And when, his, when Dylan's family went out to begin looking for him in late May of 2022, they found his boots right there behind that mound of dirt, which was some distance off. And there was also a shed right by James, Brenner, James Brenner's camper. This is what that shed looked like. And within a few days of Dylan disappearing, James Brenner... And we just recently found out that the truck was in there, right? And that he had had blood on him. And so, yeah, this shed is a lot to do with the case. Cleaned that shed to the to the point of how it looks now. You know, it doesn't look very clean, maybe to some of us, but he did remove bags out of that shed, according to Dylan's family. And he did take those to a uh, an undisclosed location. And so all of this would, would likely have come into play if if there was a trial, it still could as far as evidence. Uh, but as I mentioned, according to Dylan's family, as part of some sort of plea deal, Brenner took the authorities to the area where Dylan's body was, and they were able to find it. I spoke with Dylan's family. They, of course, are a lot of emotions tonight. This has been a, um, such a mystery since 
for two years now, but Candace did ask me to uh, convey. We think. Wow. I want to read what Debbie has to say because they're saying this is a jealousy case. Daisy, jealousy is terrible. Years back, my neighbor got ticked because I was building a wraparound covered porch on my home. That woman stood across the street, armed, arms folded with a skull on her face. Wow, Debbie, that's scary. So, yeah, that guy could have been jealous of Dylan. I do believe that. Yes. Hey, we've heard about the crazy neighbors killing each other. I mean, it happens. It does. It happens. People are crazy. Hey, Bobo. Let's see. I wonder if he was ever going to be found without the confession or help. I don't think so because I said it was a remote area. Right here in just a minute, he shows it. I thought it was near Falls, but he said it was where, near someone. But we're going to show it again. You're being charged already. Just tell the truth. Yeah, well, he got a plea deal. According to this, he got a plea deal. So that's why he squawked. But they wanted to find their son and lay him to rest. And so I don't blame him. I would have done it too. Let God deal with him. God'll get him. Thank everyone for their support and love. We are grateful we now have Dylan's body and can bring him home as we continue our fight for justice. And uh, unclear when Mr. Brenner will appear in court again. There was a hearing scheduled for this month, but at last check that was delayed. Uh, however, now with the recovery of Dylan's body, it, it could it could be had sooner rather than later. I want to show you on a map just where this place is because it's desolate. And when I say this place, I don't mean where Dylan's remains were actually found other than it was in the Lucin area, but that's a very large area. Uh, but this is where Lucin is. If you pull out here, you can see the Nevada, Utah uh, um, border right here on the left of your screen. And then over here is Montello, Nevada. Dylan went back and forth between Montello and Lucin quite a bit. This was another other, if you want to say big town, it's not real big, but the closest nearest town uh, to to where Lucin is. So he went back and forth between these two places. And in the early stages of the investigation, uh, there was a lot of, of look, a lot of focus on Montello. And then it seemed to shift into Lucin. Uh, I don't even know if there's a population count for Lucin, but if we, they do have an airport, as you can see, if we zoom out quite a bit more, this will give you a reference as far as where this is located. So over here is Tremont in Utah, Brigham City, Malad is here, Lava Hot Springs, Blackfoot, Shelley. So it's right over here. And uh, it's it's quite quite a distance if you were to fly from Idaho Falls, or start, excuse me, if you were to drive from Idaho Falls down to Lucin. But this is where his body was found. And this is where family uh, are breathing a, a sigh of relief now that his his remains have been found so there's yeah i agree i agree jillian fear, fear thy neighbor fear thy neighbor i remember that show fear thy neighbor where they would shoot each other or they would unalive each other it was really scary especially if there was a weed farm oh yeah could have been that was a remote area you never know he was in the same area how far i wonder away um, airport is all there is in, I see. It was a remote area. Oh, uh, thank you, Crystal. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. So he's going to show here some more about Dylan. There still are a lot of questions. There still are um, some court stuff to obviously get worked out, to get solved, to get taken care of. This has been a case we've covered extensively on East Idaho News since Dylan vanished. Um, in fact, here was a picture just at CrimeCon last year. They put up a Have You Seen Me poster with all of these uh, nice messages around them. Uh, keep fighting. Love how his parents represent him. We will find you, Dylan. Uh, hold on to hope. And then there's these wonderful photos that his mother has shared with us uh, and on publicly on social media. There's little Dylan as a young boy feeding pigs. There he is on a tractor. He loved, loved, loved farming, was big into farming, big into the outdoors, fishing. There he is. Um, I don't know if he's taking care of a sheep there. It looks like he might be. And 
I do want to say, if you've not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button, that like button. That helps my channel to grow, and it helps my uh, helps me to bring you all. Um, can, it helps me to bring you all more content. Um, and yes, this is very sad. So Dylan isn't the person found in Kingsport. No, no, Dylan. Dylan has been missing for two years. Dylan is from Idaho or Utah. I think he's from Utah. And so, no, it was an unknown man that was found in, in uh, Kingsport, Tennessee. But, man, there's been a lot of people missing in the state of Tennessee and specifically Greene County, Tennessee and Kingsport, Tennessee. Hawkins County, Granger County. There's a lot of people missing. Remote area of Utah. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so if you please hit that like button, y'all. That helps my channel to grow. And that subscribe, if you don't mind. For all you people coming in, we'll bring you more content like that. Welcome to the farm family. Tractor, which, again, he loved to farm. And that's what took him out to that location so that he could begin farming. He was raised in eastern Idaho. His father is still in eastern Idaho, Justin Rounds. And... Um, Tonight, again, they have the answer they've been waiting for. They have recovered Dylan Round's body. We will continue to follow this story uh, and bring you the latest developments. We have reached out to the Fox Elder County Sheriff's Office to see if they have any, uh, any um, comment. Yes. What usually happens in these types of cases is... Hang they on, do, somebody they asked about the suspect. Right yeah, he was arrested. He, was, he took a plea it's deal. Long. This guy right here, uh, he, he took a plea um, deal. He, again, he was the man said that was investigators living, or cooperated or something. We don't squatting. have all of the details. He was squatting in the trailer near Dylan. And Dylan must have just, hey, Mitzi, Mitz, Mitz be me, Mitz be me, hello. But yeah, um, Dylan, Dylan and he, like, I guess Dylan didn't pay him no mind. But his dad tried to warn him about him. And he was jealous of Dylan. I'm going to start looking into all these missing people in Tennessee. I'm a criminal justice major. Woo, Shell. I'm going to bring this up in class tomorrow. Yes, thank you. I mean, we've got Riley Strain. Have you been covering Riley? Have you been getting into Riley Strain's? Like the family is still thinking uh, foul play um, with with Riley Strain's case, you know, and they weren't they weren't too happy with the police. A, a lot of people in that area wasn't too happy with the Nashville Metro Police. Um, and now we've got Sebastian Rogers. Um, you know, I really can't. I feel like the police force is good in B Sebastian's. But I'm not too fond of the TBI, you guys, because they, it just sounds like a repeat of Summer's case. Hey, Jillian. It, it just does. It sounds a repeat over of what they said about Summer's case. We still have Summer Wells missing in Hawkins County. We've got Layla Santanelli missing in Kingsport, Tennessee. There's another girl around, I think she's 19. Layla's 21. She's missing. She went missing around the same time Layla went missing. Um, my sister seems to think that there may be a trafficking ring in the Kingsport, East Tennessee area. Oh, thank you, Miss B. M Miss B, me. The Rogers case. Um, we believe the mother and stepfather did that, in my opinion. Well, <clears throat> They have said some conflicting stories for sure, Shell. They definitely have made people suspicious through their actions. They're sure not acting like normal people would act. Like this boy's mom here, she's been out, mom and dad, you know, on talk shows trying to find out where her son is. You know, I felt so bad for his mom. Um. That would not surprise me. I know. So, I mean, you don't know what what's going on here in this in this area.
I mean, I live here in East Tennessee. But Doug, how many bodies have they found just in Greene County in the last year? And now they're finding, what, two bodies? We even had a YouTuber, a hobo. Remember the hobo YouTuber they found last week in the pond? What was his name? It was a hobo that had a YouTube channel. And they found him in a pond in Kingsport. Now, what happened to him? I mean, it's one thing after. Y'all, if I go missing, if I go missing, you you holler foul play. You hear me? Sh shoestring hobo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If old Daisy goes missing, y'all better find out where she's at. Because somebody's got her. <laughs> yeah, it was shoestring. They found him in Kingsport. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was a YouTuber. Pretty popular YouTuber. But they did say he was confused and stuff right before he, like, one of his live streams or something. I'm not for sure about the case. I just know he was a, a hobo YouTuber. But still, look at all these people they're finding. I mean, Tennessee's a hot spot right now, y'all. Then stay out of the woods with the noise, Daisy. <laughs> the noose. You mean the new? <laughs> I know. But still, I'm telling y'all, these cases are creepy. And this man is creepy, too. And for him to unalive a young kid like that because he was jealous of him, I know I need to stay out of the woods or take me some bear spray, soft squash uh, spray or something. <laughs> it's sad though, y'all. Did they have a cold snap there recently? Yes. Yeah, they did. They had, um, we've had a couple days that's been cold. Hey, Miss V, how are you? We have had a couple days that has been very cold. So. This Miss Daisy's Farm Channel. Oh, hey, Miss V. Um, but yeah, it's it's just really, it's sad, y'all. I was actually going to do a live about Sebastian and Summer tonight, and then I come across this where Dylan was found, and I thought I'd bring it out to everybody. Poor poor boy, no chance to live his life because of the the sicko yeah because he was jealous of him i just wonder what really did happen his dad said he thought he was jealous of that he kept saying that he was spoiled and stuff i don't know i i wouldn't feel comfortable as a mama out with my child out by themselves but he was a farm boy and i'm gonna get this office so i'll take it to the place where he found Dylan, in case people not wants to know the area where Dylan was found. But um, he was a farm boy, and so he knew how to handle but there's just mean people in this world. You're the only one that brought this to the to attention. Uh, I'm sure somebody else will probably do it, hopefully. Summer is the reason I went back to school. I think about her every day. Summer is my daughter's name. That Summer's name is definitely a very beautiful name. Candace and Don had picked out a beautiful name for her. Summer Moon Utah Wells. Unfortunately, there's no new, nothing new on this case. Or on Summer's case. Poor old Sebastian's case, it's turning out to be just like summers a whole lot of drama a whole lot of this that and another and a lot of focus took it off of him and i think that us as creators needs to put our focus back on him and not really focus on the step parents or the parents at this point until law enforcement says otherwise um uh, you know, what nancy grace said <laughs> Miss V loves it. According to what Nancy Grace said on um, Sebastian's case is Chris 
said the TBI was going to give him a lie detector test and that they advised him not to do one with Nancy Grace. We all know Chris is a storyteller. He's told a couple stories. He pretty much lied about having a a lie detector test on another platform. And then he told Nancy Grace that um, only Katie had one and that he would take one with Nancy Grace. And who knows, you know, who knows? I understand that I had people jealous of me because I had so much, but I busted my ace to get it right. Yeah, they want it quickly, but they don't want to bust their tail for it. And then they get mad at people that does do it. Debbie said, it makes me mad whoever takes these children is getting off scot-free because people surrounding the parents spreading out and looking for the children immediately. Chris said he took one and passed way back in an early interview. But then he took it back. And said he didn't on Nancy Grace's. And then he said that on Nancy Grace's that he was going to, she had one set up for him and he wouldn't do it. He backed out and said, now the FBI is going to give him one. From what I can remember, Dylan was trying to show how you can plant and farm in the desert of Lucan, Utah. He was trying to prove it could be done. He could have started something to show the world. I know. A life was taken. I mean, it's like these evil people are all around and they don't care. I mean, so many young children. Boys are becoming victims of SA more than women are. Girls are now. Look at the Diddy story. Look what happened with that. Look, look what. Look what the Diddy, look what Diddy, you know, what happened with P. Diddy. Allegations are coming out about him allegedly essaying not only S workers, but underage S workers and young boys such as all, all Usher and Justin Bieber, allegedly. It's all alleged, but. They need to separate the parents and not let them talk to each other and talk to the mother by herself. You would have thought they would have already done that. You know, I don't know why they haven't done that. Maybe they have done it. Chris and Seth infuriates me. Get off the internet and find Sebastian. Well, Seth has been looking. I think every day Seth looks every day. Chris is abusive. He never allowed the police to get her alone. Well, that's where the police should step in and say, hey, we're going to separate you two and we're going to go over this. And they may have already done that. I, I don't know if they have done that or not. We don't know what they have done. Now, it seems like to me that the, the Southern um, County Police there is pretty good. I don't know about the TBI. But it seems like that they're pretty good, but you got to have evidence before you can make arrest. And sometimes that means waiting. It's a, maybe it's a waiting game. Chris lied and said he took the test and passed. In a reality, Katie took the test, but Ellie never confirmed she passed. Right, Miss B. And we know we heard him tell different stories like, Two different stories, and Katie sit there beside of him. Y'all, she sit there beside of him and let him tell those two stories about the whooping of Sebastian. The first story was because Sebastian didn't have a belt on, which I think is absolutely ridiculous to whoop a child over. The second story that he told on Nancy Grace was because Sebastian lied. Okay, in the first story that he told on Smiley's World, He said that Sebastian was a 15-year-old boy. He said, okay, so we know Sebastian just turned 15. On Nancy Grace's, he said it was three years prior, which would have made him like 13. So there were so many inconsistencies in different stories. And Katie sit right there and let him tell those stories 
and never tried to correct him. So that tells me that she's a fibber too, in my opinion. What else was it we caught in that? Oh, yeah. He went on, told on Smiley's story that, um, that uh, the CPS was involved and that the, that Sebastian went to school and told the CPS, told the school and the school called the CPS worker and he got on Nancy Grace and said CPS was never called other than one time over his daughter. Now that's a bold face lie. That the fact that the house was so clean and they got new mattresses is very telling. I want to find the old mattresses. Yes. I did not know that, Shell. More like they had AB'd him to the last three years. I do think that that could be a reason why. This is just my opinion, y'all. This is all for entertainment purposes only. This is our speculations and our opinions. And my opinion is, I think Chris is afraid to take the lie detector test because he will have probably questions about whipping Sebastian, uh, in my opinion. And I feel, in my opinion, after seeing him tell two different stories, I feel like that he may have whipped Sebastian a lot more than what he was saying. Him being from the military and everything. Seth has a lot of inconsistencies also doesn't make any of them guilty. Dylan's mom was accused horrible and clearly she had nothing to do with what happened to her son. Wow, Sammy, that is true. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. We don't need to jump to conclusions, but sometimes, man, it can be right there in your face. Like, I'm trying not to get on that, that train. I'm trying to be good and not get on that train. But when you see people's, you know, not telling the truth so much and deliberately telling two different stories, um, then you, you'll know, you know. That something ain't right. Something is not right. So, in my opinion, Chris was home. He hit S and he went too far. You think you think he did? Daisy, among other things that are being said. Prayers for Miss V. What's going on with Miss V? I wait for Ellie to tell me what happened. And that's fair, Sammy. Because we do have to be fair. We do have to be fair when it comes to these cases. You know, we have to be fair. But I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, uh, Dylan's mom was accused like Katie. I was on Dylan's parents' side from the get-go. Okay. Something don't sit right with Sebastian, in my opinion. Now. Could have Sebastian ran away and met met somebody else out there on the streets that might have hurt him? Or could he have wandered off that night? Absolutely he could have. Um, you know, he absolutely could have. But we don't know. Well, he is found and they find out what happened to him. We don't know at the moment about what happened to him. And it's very, very sad, you know. And I just feel like we are, you know, we're just sitting amongst the wolves. I mean, we don't know what's happening. But I do think if you are going to travel to that area, in my opinion, if you're going to travel there in that area, then why not search? Don't sit and live stream it. Search. Then do your live stream or do videos while you're live streaming of you searching. But please search. If my butt goes to Hendersonville, Tennessee and searches for that little boy, make no mistake, I'm going to be searching on my side by side. I, oh, I heard he used to run his school when he got upset. 
and would hide under the neighbor's car. We never heard that till now. Wow. Do we know that to be true, Laura? Because there's so many stories and speculations that we hardly don't know what's true and what ain't true. It's just mean he's an a abuser. He abused Nina, her kids, and Sebastian more than Katie, too. Military has nothing to do with why I believe Chris did this. This is the way he treats his wives. Allegedly, right? <laughs> right, little Laura P. But, you know, I agree. There's, there's, there's a lot of military men that don't hurt their wives or children. That's what I'm saying, Daisy. Stay away from the parents' house and jobs. Get out there and search. Yeah, I can't guarantee that I would be able to go. I've got too many animals. But if Jinkies wanted to take a trip and stuff, I wouldn't mind going and searching. It's only three hours away. Hello, Little Red, one, two, three. It's only three hours away. So I wished I could go and search. There, is, there are PD calls that have been released, Miss Daisy. Police department calls. Now, I heard the 911 call. I heard that one. Let's see. I'd like to hear what the other three wives have to say about him. I'm surprised the sleuths ain't found him. I'm surprised the sleuth has not found his other three wives. <laughs> Honestly. I'm not saying he did anything. I'm just saying he's a storyteller. In my opinion, I don't think Katie had anything to do with it. I heard that to Laura. Also, new videos out there of the dispatch call of the first 11 hours. And all the searching and sightings were interesting. Okay. Yes, there's information coming out, but we have to verify it. Yeah. But the point is, you search Daisy, you wouldn't harass. Her. No, 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 absolutely not. My main agenda would be finding the little boy, not to fuss with anybody. Does Chris not have a bio dad anyone know about him? I don't know. I don't know. My mom and pops weren't military, but they sure acted like Drill sergeants, hubby is military and he's way too soft on our girls. Oh, diamonds. I've heard the stories about your mommy. Your mommy didn't play. <laughs> I think they have. I would have I would not talk if he really is the way Nina said he was. I kind of believe Nina. I did. I know that she probably is not completely innocent, but she seemed like she was pretty, I don't know, y'all. I could be fooled a lot of ways. They are talking about Bigfoot on there. Who is? Both Chris' parents live near them. I think Katie's parents live near them also. Well, we heard Nina talk about what happened with Chris's parents. I don't know. I'm not making obsessions. I'm not going to be a part of the the witch hunt. I'm just going to speak my opinion and what I think. I totally believe her. Couldn't tell she has trauma. You can tell she's traumatized, in my opinion. Hey, always late. Footprints, Daisy. What footprints? Big footprints? I don't think any of the three parents are good people from just what I've heard them say themselves. Well, I'm not going to say, I hate to say that because you don't, people don't know who you're dealing with. Hey, Brown Bear! Um, because, you know, it's it's not easy dealing with a child with autism. I'm not saying it's okay to whoop him or anything like that. But it's hard, and no parent is perfect. In my opinion, there's no perfect parent. We can beat ourselves up all day, but 
but when you're dealing with a child with a disability, it's, it's even worse. Let's see. They release the radio and dispatch conversation, Miss Daisy. Okay. Let me see here. Think Katie's family is in North and South Carolina and have had a major L LE issues. Really? Katie and Chris put their Facebooks on private today. Oh, okay. Well, they are getting harassed quite a bit, y'all. I mean, I think it's going too far without knowing who did what in that case. And I think it's turning into chaos. I do. I think it's chaos. And I think we should take a step back and reevaluate and more focus on finding Sebastian than the parents. This is a situation like Summers all over again. I refuse to hate without facts, Debbie said. The dispatch call they released, they talked footprints by the pond and the construction site under the bridge cover. Over, uh, all over. Okay. I have a child that is severely autistic. It is extremely hard. Never have had to hit him. Right. Sebastian really shouldn't have been hit. In my opinion, he has a disability. He did. Sebastian needed a little bit more. In my opinion, understanding. My sister is deaf. My parents never put their hands on her. They don't understand anger the way we do. Exactly. Exactly. And then you've got this dude that comes in the family and he doesn't know how to handle Sebastian and doesn't, you know, he's already had been problems with his kid and his, you know, he's already, you know, this strict guy and he's trying to play he in my opinion tries to put corporate punishment on a child with a disability and i don't care who that social worker was she's at fault for not taking up for sebastian she should have took up for sebastian in my opinion now Seb you know that might have been the reason why sebastian couldn't come back to her come back to school because they had already got him in trouble by by not believing it i just think if sebastian has not been seen any cameras leaving the home that speaks volumes in my opinion right i agree that's cool brown bear Let's see I heard today that Sebastian was just diagnosed last year that he's high functioning. And is, is that true? I don't know. I think that's what Seth said, right? And the last year he said that they were getting him help because, and it's probably because of the essay that they actually found out and figured out that Sebastian had a disability. They where they sent him to a therapist, I'd say more than likely that that's what, that's what they've done. They figured it out when he went to the therapist. Okay. Diamond sent me the conversation. I hate to go into this case, the Sebastian's case covering Dylan Round's case. I hate to intermingle cases. Um, I sent you the link to the radio conversation between each other and dispatch Miss Daisy. So let me try to pull that up. Um, hang on just a second. Miss Diamonds. Thank you, Miss Diamonds. Let me grab the link and then I'll pull it up and we can listen to the dispatch. Hang on. Here we go. Put this up here. Perfect quality video. Heading 1008 Caverport, 1008 Caverport, Hendersonville. Caller advised that their 15 year old girl is not in the bed. We are right now, 3 blonde hair, approximately 5 foot, 120 pounds. I was going to be wearing a black sweatshirt, black sweatpants. 
you know, those have a form of autism. This is the first time it happened. I was going to be in the home before midnight. The doors are locked at this time. Did four men out? I'm going to you 47184 and 12. Steve not. Left his son at the house. The mother is driving around looking for him in the Victoria Place subdivision, and she is driving a big blue infinity. Let's get there and see what's going on. Go around and search the residence. We'll go from there. I'm in the area. Check one hold up. This is the same You can text me as this far in route to the misery to the house. I said, there's no medical center ER, center station ER, center regional ER, and Thailand, all clear of the juvenile. I think it's these guys' code red has them on. That is them for you guys. Next big track back up. Going into the construction site over here, back towards the beach. It's awful muddy. Do you see any foot threats or anything? Couldn't have any shoes. No, I did. I do have some foot threats. Right there where you're standing? Yeah. Leading right over here to the retain. No shoes, just foot threats. He literally dug into it. Next, let me straight to the retain. Behind the door, he dug into the water. Yeah, do you see any friends around it? There was a few uh, footprints in some of the softer dirt uh, headed straight this way on the track that he was running. Do we have a picture yet? That's a what was that heat signature at? Where the rip ramp is, well, where the trees are, 25 feet maybe out in the middle. Hey guys, the construction zone, there's another pond. There's somebody standing in the woods. It's a, it looks like a person. It is a person we know, but there's another pond. He's standing back there by himself. Past the construction zone in the same area back there. Uh, yeah, the, the north end of it, yeah. The only machine here goes straight back. There's a, there's a person in the woods uh, by that pond. There's the house on the other side of the tree line. Going back toward beach or going on the back side. Yeah, on the back side, and he's not moving. He's just standing there by himself in the woods. It's Hendersonville 517. I'm on the northeast corner in the cemetery across the tree line. Am I close? No, the back side. Mickey, if you can, do you have anybody there with you? Stand by. Uh, let me see if I can find them on my map. I got my drone ground for the moment, and I'll see if I can do it. Bear gets over it. One of the two. I'm in my truck. Two, there's four of us on foot coming across the yard. Start directions. 19 on the screen. Hang on just a second, y'all. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mitz B. Mitz B B. Thank you for that super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for that super sticker. Yeehaw, yeehaw. Thank you so much. Y'all, did y'all hear that? There was someone standing in the woods. Did y'all hear that? That's creepy. Was it Sebastian? Who was standing there standing at that staring at that cop? Thank you so much for that super sticker, sweetheart. Thank you so much. Here we go, guys. We're gonna finish it up. Yeah, so yeah, keep it on. <laughs> go left, go left. Did come back, you passed it. There's no there's one piece there's one block with you going on into the woods, it's woods. You should be about fifteen foot from it. What's the child's first name? Should be all over it, whatever it is right there. The two people walking the wood. It's a mannequin. Sorry, guys. Look just like a person from the air. Who's the 66? What's the name of the child that we're looking for? First name is Fast. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? First name is Fast. Last. Clothing description was black sweatpants with a white stripe, black long sleeve t shirt with a friend. Mickey, how many drones do y'all have up? One at the moment. I've got mine ground so I can get Sark up. I'll be back in the area momentarily. 29 Central, I'm thinking. Put two out here, will we? And for has anybody been there since the initial? There's a whole bunch of people here now. Four in the home. Can you help me listen to the radio on the north end until we wrap this up, please? Yes, sir. Brandon, you've got uh, Hendersonville 
Mountain Patrol coming up there, and Joe's sending some more cars. If y'all want, if we can start from the beginning, from the original house, and set up a new plan up there. Yeah, boy, that's what we're doing now, sir. Thank you. One dollar year. So, neighbor advised that he's found the child under his child, under his son's car, which is across the street, two doors up. So, be sure and search under cars and under things. Who do you want to go with this other canine search and rescue? I just talked to the GC, the construction back here. He's going to start getting the word out to all his crews that are out here working. Everybody, night four to one thousand. So we can get a game plan and move to me. Hey, Burgett, can you put a drone right over top of this trash can, this dumpster? See if there's anything in it. 188. Van 184 is going to send you a picture. You send out a code red for 1008 Stafford. Code red was sent out at 0745 this morning. 24. Um, we will send it in good. Can we retry that, please? 24, will it? 12 to 188. Go ahead, sir. Can you come to 1008, please? 24. 12 to any units that are going to be assisting with 1008. Please come to 1008 Stafford Court now, please. So at the beginning of Kelly Lane 1000. We're going to work our way north of Kelly Lane. That's fine. I'll get these two houses right here, and we'll take the right side. The white Ford truck, that's the Hendersonville officer's house that's with me. No, that house hasn't been checked. The next house up from is a single white Ford in the driveway. We log a uh, neighborhood Facebook page. Post was made 1023 check. Uh, no motion on camera. Uh, oh, hang on just a second. Thank you, Miss V. Thank you for gifting that super chat. Hang on just a second. Peppermint Patty got it. Thank you so much, Miss V. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. Sounds like that there were a lot of different things. It's getting more intense. We got more to go. Listen up. Sure. Thank thank you, Chelsea, Seattle, jacket. I personally two hours ago. Three for my one thirty nine. I'm going to has a camera, but nobody's answering the door. Uh, he had some ties at White House High School, and every time he got in trouble, he wanted to go back to White House, so I notified White House PD, and we're notifying this so. Have you heard of this brand new product that instantly cleans toilets without any scrubbing? Take any dirty toilet, pour in one scoop, and watch the foam expand to cover the entire bowl. Let it sit for about 30 minutes, then flush it away, and watch your toilet sparkle like new. It's patented. This way, the camera is correct. This is for nobody's answering, nobody's home. In reference to that address, uh, please run a registration check on testing tab. What's going to say? Next is that Jerry's 2012 BMW, 7 black and color, registered. address confirmed and hang on thank you mitz b uh mitz b me thank you for gifting that super chat thank you thank you let's see who got it langley got it woohoo thank you mitz uh b me thank you so much for that super chat or that Gifted membership. Thank you so much. God bless you for that. Woohoo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. You guys are being awesome tonight. I love you guys. All right. Greg, when you can't see it, you can find any information. Let's see if we can look up on the phone number or something. We would appreciate it. Command the units that are at staff report. When you check a residence, please give me the numeric. And unit numbers that have checked it and whether or not you made contact with anybody. Made contact with 1000 Killing Lane. Uh, he checked all the cameras, nothing was on. Uh, no answer at 102 or 103 Killing Lane. 105 answer, hasn't seen it. 
Uh, that's not ring for me. Yeah. Or you're saying 102, is it 1002? 1002, I'm sorry. Did you ask if he had any white purple hoodie? I don't know if the parents were there, but uh, just on out of the feed, there was a white purple hoodie with horror stuff on it. And they asked him. Mom doesn't have eyes, she told me. Yeah. Um, they... Oh, thank you, Diamonds. Thank you for gifting a membership again. Thank you, Diamonds. Angela Moore got a membership. Woohoo! Thank you guys so much for gifting memberships. God bless you guys. Thank you, Diamonds. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sweetie. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Miss Diamonds. God bless you. They were at Dragon Square last night. Uh, just bowling at them. Do you have a unit go there? I'm not sure that he hasn't returned there. Uh, 1015, have ring cameras, but didn't pick up anything. 517, Anderson Village, excuse me. 1000. Contact the same thing. You know, nothing on Ranger Bell. 2012, Taylor Lane through 20. Oh. oh, my goodness. Thank you, Debbie Jean. Debbie Jean gifted five memberships. Woohoo! Thank you, Debbie. Country Girl got one. Brown Girl 72 got one. Ashley Stewart got one. Yorkshire. Yorkie mom got one. Woohoo! Thank you, Debbie. God bless you guys. You guys are being awesome tonight. Thank you so much for blessing me. God bless you so much. Thank you, Debbie Jean. God bless you guys. You're awesome. Woohoo! I wish I had my cowbell. Where is my cowbell? Maybe I can find it and start ringing it, y'all. Thank you so much. God bless you all so much for that. Here we go, guys. Thank you so much. The lady at 1032, Kellen, uh, runs the neighborhood Facebook page, and she's updating it to request people to look in their cross spaces and hidden areas. Four. Hey, on uh, at one time, I've been telling Randy, do I happen to check the cross space? I will have to check my list, but if it wasn't locked from the outside, it was checked. 1018 Stafford. They are reviewing their camera footage right now. I need to check my take and they cameras check. No, that's not. 184 year low volume. I got, they got cameras checked. Okay, well, 1018. <laughs> well, I'll be out at uh, St. John Missionary. 285. Uh, resident at 1028, Kellen Lane, states that he just saw a kid with a black shirt. Black shorts. Black shorts. Had a phone in his hand coming across the construction. Uh, when he made uh, contact with this gentleman, the subject went straight back to the woods at the top of the phone line. I just talked to him. He's one helping. Well, thank you. 12 dollars units. When you're done with your assignment, please come back to 1008 Stafford. 1023, 24, 18, and 16 Stafford. Over in cameras. Nothing's been called. Operations have started at Willow Bend Drive. St. John Baptist is clear all the way along. We're going to have dumpsters and all the truth buses have been clear also. 10-4. Are you going back to Stafford Court? Uh, yeah, search, but, you know, I'll search, but you know what area. 10-26. Kellen Wayne, no contact. 10-28, no contact. Nothing on their cameras. And 10-30. Contact, nothing on their cameras, and nothing in the tree house behind the house. 10 4. 68 command. All houses on Kevin Lane have been checked. Right, those woods on that side of uh, Long Hollow, we've been unable to fly to due to the distance with the drones. So, those big woods that's south of uh, the house, we have been able to shut off all properties on Sandy Wood Court have been checked. We're starting on Honeysuckle now. Yeah, that's 3293. Long Hollow Pike, uh, beyond the creek, and checking a cave behind the house. I'm almost back to the house. Meet my partner. I crawled back into the cave as far as I could go before it got muddy. No footprints, and it's collapsed only in about 10 feet. 10 but you're out of it, correct? Mountains left. 10 
Uh, Trooper Grinder has himself and a few troopers. They're going to hit the road outside of our immediate vicinity and just uh, look for him walking down the roadway somewhere. 3301, Long Hollow Pike has been cleared. Stone House, several outbuildings uh, have been cleared. They're unlocked if anyone is going to slow. I just sent you the endangered poster. If you can put that on our social media, please. 12 to 188. Sorry. Commercials. Sorry about that. Did you all check inside each one of those buses behind TW Hunter? 247, we checked them all. Okay, well, we're about the three closest to the building. Will you ask Kenneth to respond to the area of National Pike and Carrying Road? There's a juvenile in that area wearing black pants and a red T-shirt. I was shaking back and forth like he had autism. It was just reported to us. South side of Long Hollow from Killing Lane to Center Point has been checked. Uh, can you check the field houses that are up on top of the hill by the practice field back behind T.W. Hunter? I don't see that anybody has tracked through there on foot. Careful. The barn and my starting location is clear. Residence of one thirty two twenty one one hall five is clear. And from my starting location to Shackle Island, I've walked the entire creek bed and then it appears clear. Well, so one eighty two has been behind T W Hunter, all the way behind Beach uh football field and baseball field, up in the fields, checking through lines all the way to the cemetery, behind Beach Road Presbyterian. We're still here so far cut up. It's clear. You know, something 182, we've not met ourselves around to the front of the schools and the side of the school We're still in the back. Yeah. Very well, we get a long haul flight. Three years. Go ahead, three. The bus in the shed have been checked at 3220. Yeah, well, thank you. Can you and your partner stop at Willow Bend and go house to house up uh, Willow Bend? Check all those, please. See what people are driven through. It doesn't look like they were house to house. Yeah, well, every house on Honeysuckle has been checked. People that answer the door have only seen the parish man this morning, nothing else. The White House and Red Barn, adjacent to DW Honor, 2105 New Hope, is clear. 3417 THP has joined in with myself and 517 on World Band to check houses. Careful. The big Holden Pond has been cleared by Hendersonville Fire. They're going to rehab at Jackal Island for a bit, and then I go to the one over by the cemetery. Careful. Field houses behind the beach. The soccer field's been uh, searched. We're going to head over to the side field house across the street from the fire hall. 106, 108, 110, 112, Willowbrook, all check no contact with any homeowners. And none of these houses have car cross spaces. Beach football complex. Are you all still searching that area? Yes, sir. Make contact with a realtor at 114. Hasn't seen him, and all the rooms have been cleared. 116, make contact with that homeowner. He said he has seen that child walking in the neighborhood in past times, but not recently. The main field house next to the freshman annex has been completely searched. All clear. It's got a beach softball, beach football. It's the one next to the um, beach going church between it and the freshman annex. It's the main football complex. We are, uh, me and Marshall, back here in the back of the cemetery back here. No contact with anyone in his truck is not here either. So thank you, ladies, for trying to get in her driveway in your cars and, you know, he's a key there by chance. It is, but it's locked. Okay. So she's trying to get in the driveway. Still no, happy. We haven't had a process. Call came in at 6.33 this morning. Great, thank you. You may do it, man. We just put another can on the ground at the house. See if it picks up anything. We are breaking off fuel gallons for her fuel. Oh, thank you.
the creek worsens to New Shack and Long Hollow in the bridge there, fully checked. Uh huh. Marty, what's your location? I'm looking by 109 in Thornton's right now. I just got a phone call. Kid matching the description, hiding under the bridge, lower station camp behind the market. I'm being route, I'm close. Did we get somebody else on the other side of uh, the nursery to come down? Uh, she stated that he could be on that side. 446, what was he last seen that? Just under the bridge. Uh, she stated that when she went down to turn around, he was gone. 446, did you talk to the client? She's still by the bridge. I uh, white female, black leggings, I believe, um, blonde hair, to the 447-446, you seen any tracks that way? I'm taking the uh, creek cover to see any tracks. 446-447, hold your location please. I'm on foot now. 10 I know they've got the dog up there. The uh, helicopter's coming back to you. Uh, 158 Upper Station. The residents say the EPA, uh, approximately five minutes ago, somebody walked through that gate right below you. Uh, there's somebody in black. Yeah. There's a deputy at 158. I saw somebody in black on the tree line. I don't know if it's one of our guys. Yeah, there's two law enforcement guys walking back here along the tree line. Let's go through there. 12 to 24. How long have they lived in that house? A year. Where were we at before? English Farms, Gals. 449 Remington in Cambridge Farms. White male, gray t shirt, white pants. They didn't get to see his face, kind of shaggy blonde hair. We'll be out at Lower Station, uh, Scarlet, and Big Station with the. Uh, Male, white male juvenile from four earlier in the creek. Who checked out with a juvenile on station camp? This is not going to be our missing juvenile. He's with his father in the creek. I made contact with the male, the caller, and him in the trail called about. It's not our subject. Wow, thank you, Diamonds, for that. Thank you. Thank you, Diamonds. That was, man, they had so many people that thought they saw him, and then it turns out that it wasn't him. Um, I think Diamonds is working right now. It was good. That was good. It, they searched, man. They were on it. They were searching. They were searching for him. They still been searching. Like, they was clearing every area. There was times where I was wanting, I was sitting here thinking, oh, I hope it's him. But then I realized that it wasn't him. You know what I'm saying? But you think, you want to think, I, if you, you want to think that, you know, that it's him. But then it's not, it wasn't him. And it's sad that they haven't found him yet. And could he be hiding after a month? I don't know. It's been a month. The Box Elder County Sheriff's Office said the remains were found in Lucan, Utah, in western Box Elder County, Myrtle. Thank you, Diamond. Thank you, honey. Yeehaw. That was very, very, that was very, very informative. And it makes you just kind of live that moment. Did you hear him mention the footprints? I did. But then they just kind of disregarded the footprints. That doesn't make sense. It, he found the footprints by the pond, but then there's not been any other mention of the footprints. Why are they hiding the footprints? That's what I'd like. Well, that's, that was very informative. We might go over that again tomorrow and talk about it. Very informative. 
and very sad at the same time because it's kind of like we were reliving it, listening to it. Um, I'd like to know why a mannequin was in the woods. <laughs> Me too, Christy. I thought that's weird. That is weird. Why in the H would they have a mannequin in the woods? I would be creeped out, especially with a missing child, you know, in that area. I don't know what kind of mannequin it was, but that is creepy. Very creepy. Okay. But guys, I've been on here for two hours and 10 minutes. So I think I'm going to go ahead and end this live for tonight. I know it's early, but uh, I think we've had a good live stream. I don't want to do anything to mess this live stream up or have anything. I think we can leave it at this and we'll play this again tomorrow. It is weird. It's, have you heard this, Sherry, Shell, before? Ellie was following up and pretty impressive on that one, but still no sightings on camera. And yes, uh, the mannequin. Very, very weird. Very, very weird. Um, it just makes you live, relive that night. But I thank you guys so much. You're welcome, Sandra. And I want to thank Diamonds and my mods and everybody that's uh, participated in the live tonight, whether you subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, um, please hit that subscribe button and that like button that helps my channel to grow. We will play this again tomorrow and try to analyze it. I love you all. Thank you all, everybody, for your support tonight, for supporting my channel. Um, Y'all stay prayed up. Please pray for Sebastian. Pray for Dylan's family. Y'all, please put in a prayer for Dylan's family as well. And God bless you all. Stay prayed up. Stay safe out here on these YouTube streets because they can be pretty rough. I'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless you guys. And stay blessed and stay safe. And with that being said, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button. And bless you all, bye. Empty hearts and neon lights. The playing with my mind. Gotta get out of fear tonight. Oh, I wanna run off and I'm flying. And I'll tell myself it's fine to be alone. Just to find somewhere that finally feels like home. Oh, oh, oh. I hate all this. Oh, Wasting time Yeah, I wanna run off and fly